to old England forever. 1788 was a busy year for cricket. The world's newest cricketing nation had just landed at Sydney Cove, although it would be 16 years before the first recorded cricket match. In 1788, on the other side of the world at St John's Wood, just outside London, a gentleman's club known as the Marlebone Cricket Club celebrated its first birthday. In this first year, the MCC set about revising the laws of cricket. The modern cricket era was underway, in England at least. Australia had some catching up to do when it came to cricket. Our history was just starting out. We were busy making new friends. For many of our cricketing forebears, those days were far too busy to indulge in such time-honoured pleasures. In the 5th century, the Jutes came from Europe to settle in the region now known as Kent and Hampshire. They brought a game with them that could explain the strong cricket followings of those counties today. The Vikings were great explorers and indulged in other pursuits apart from the well-documented stories of rape and pillage. The Vikings liked to relax at home and abroad and in Ireland in the 9th century they demonstrated a bat and ball game called Natalker. Cricket had come a long way by the 14th century. The name cricket could be traced to the Anglo-Saxon for crook. Crook. The shepherds used their crooks to strike a ball, obviously when the wolf was laying low. As time marched on, so did cricket. Country boys bowled underarm to a handle gate of a sheep pen. The crossbar or bale could be dislodged and the batsman was on his way. In 1697, the first 11-a-side game was played for the stake of 50 guineas. By 1782, prizes had risen as high as 1,000 guineas. The first officially recorded game in Australia took place in 1804. The late intense weather has been very favourable to the amateurs of cricket who have scarcely lost a day in the last month. Australia had begun to play and in 1861 the first English side came to visit us. For many, this tour was a poor substitute for a cancelled lecture tour by Charles Dickens. The Englishmen, led by H.H. H. Stevenson, were given a grand welcome. They were opposed by teams made up of 15, 18 and 22 men. But Australia still had a lot to learn. A total of 13 ducks in their two innings of this match. A Dickens of a lesson. Another team came in 1863-64 under the captaincy of George Parr, a famous Nottinghamshire player. A third team in 1873-74 had as its captain the most famous cricketer of all, a young Dr W.G. Grace. The doctor, or W.G., was on his honeymoon. The time for Australia to stand up and be counted arrived on March 15, 1877. Australia's first Test 11 was assembled to face an English 11. Only two generations had elapsed since the arrival of the first fleet. Australia, under Captain David Gregory, went into bat on Thursday, March 15, 1877. It wasn't just all cricket. It is reported that the most beautiful creatures in the colony paraded as close as permissible to the boundary flags. Was it the beauty parade or the occasion that inspired Australia's Charles Bannerman? Bannerman went on to make 165 of Australia's total of 245 before retiring hurt. England, in its first innings, fell to the bowling of Midwinter with 5 for 78. Midwinter's figures were surpassed by the English bowlers of Shaw and Ulliott in Australia's second innings. Kendall struck back for Australia in England's second innings, taking 7 for 55. To the astonishment of all, but perhaps the Australian players, England had lost the first test by 45 runs. The greatest test of all actually came two days early of its centenary. It was March 12, 1977, at the world's amphitheatre of cricket, the Melbourne Cricket Ground. The English lineup was Woolmer, Brearley, Underwood, Randall, Amos, Fletcher, Greg, the captain, Knott, Old, Lever and Willis. For Australia, Davis, McCosker, Cozier, Greg Chappell, Captain, Hooks, Walters, Marsh, Gilmore, 
of Keith, Lily and Walker. After 100 years, luck came England's way on the toss and Tony Gregg sent Australia into bat. The test of tests was underway. This was a test match of individual brilliance from many players. A young David Hooks made his name on this occasion. And down the ground it goes, that's a great shot, that's almost a six. Over the fence, or hitting the fence on the first bounce. That was almost a six through extra cover. The Hooks is 45 for 227. Hooks is certainly not frightened to hit the ball. And he's got that round towards fine leg, a chase round for Underwood. And it's going to be close, Underwood will get to it. No, he won't. Four more. Hooks is 44. And away it goes again, beautiful shot. Three in a row. And the young man on his first test is 48. Five for 235. Well, certainly Hooks gets the 50. This is his first test. It will be a notable milestone for him. Not only 50 in his first test, but a 50 in the centennial test. And away it goes, which could be his 50, up towards the boundary. A beautiful shot. Four in a row. All fours off England's captain. 52 to David Hooks. A brilliant performance. A standing ovation right round this huge ground. And through again. It's racing out towards the boundary. It might get there, but see what happens. It's very close indeed, and the ball will win five in a row. A great English bowler and a great Australian batsman match wits. There was bravery that will be talked about for another hundred years. Again. Sean, he's pulled it on. Hit him in the face. He's hit him in the face. He's drugged it onto his wicket. Well, that was a most unlucky dismissal. Here's McCosker swathed in bandages with March approaching his century. Leave it to McCosker. And he's hooked the short ball, it's coming down to the boundary. And that will make it eight for 387, it stumps on the third day. England's Derek Randall played the innings of his life. Good shot, straight down the ground. That was a... Another fine shot, beautiful shot. Classic cover drive. Four run to equal their first innings total. Oh, that's a great shot. Pulled away from the mid-wicket. Very, very seldom, I think, that you see an Englishman being able to put Lily in front of square. Great shot by Randall. Moves on now to 42. And he's got other way all right this time. Beautifully played, square on the offside. And just reaching the boundary, and that four bring up the 100 for England. Oh, fine drive. Plays that shot so well. Sterling fight back on the part of the England batsman. And much of it due now to Randall, who's on 87. And they're going for a run. That's his hundred. Magnificent effort. Randall, Derek Randall, a hundred in his first test against Australia. And that's him on the head, a bad one, bad one. And there's a there. He didn't fall in the wicket. Down he goes. Lily to Randall. Lily to Randall. 
Smith, three for a single, and Randall, 150. And the trail for a quarter is he? He's walked. He's gone. And a chance, he's out. It's all over. Marsh again, a brilliant catch. Marsh has taken four catches. England all out, 95. And Rod Marsh has broken Wadagrat's keeping record with his 188th dismissal. And over to Marsh. And that's beaten the field. It's racing out towards the boundary three points. Four to Rod Marsh. And that's the other side of the ground. Away it goes to the mid wicket area. There's a field from there, but he won't reach it. Into the fence for four. And that could be it. This is off the pad. I've gone one. Let's see what happens. The umpire is indicating that's his hundred. Rod Marsh has made history in cricket. The first Australian keeper, the only player so far in the centenary test. And that's two records he's broken in this very match. And that's it. It's LBW. Alan Knott is out. England all there were many great deeds over those five days in March. And Australia triumphing by a margin of 45 runs.